triple integrals. Here we introduce uh, the idea of integrating uh, using uh, three integrals, uh, ideally to compute uh, the volume. But uh, it may be at times necessary to, com to compute an integrated um, uh, integral and not in particularly uh, the volume. But ideally, we introduce the triple integral with the intent uh, is to uh, find the volume. We take a solid, uh, as in the diagram here, and we want to partition it using uh, uh, squares or cubes, uh, cubes of the same dimension. Uh, this dimension in, in the two space, uh, it looks like b minus a over over n, but here in the third space it becomes a cube of, of all sides, x sub i, y sub i, z sub i being the same dimension. So in this uh, so-called uh, partitioning of these small boxes to approximate uh, the solid, we're able to, by the limitation process, uh, compute it uh, exactly. And so here, the definition of the triple integral, if f is a continuous function over a bounded solid region q, then the triple integral of f over the solid is defined here as the triple integral over the solid of f of x, y, z with respect to uh, the change in the volume is the limit. Here, the partition is based on one of, the, one of these cubes. And we just take the summation of them. Uh, so when the partition, these cubes are, 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 are shrunk smaller and smaller um, of the summation of all of these, um, uh, these sums of the volumes, uh, we are set to approximate um, precisely the triple integral. And if f is positive, then we have the, uh, we have the volume. So here, uh, the volume of the solid region Q is given by the volume of Q, the triple integral. Here, no function to evaluate. All the evaluation is with the lower and upper limits of integration uh, with respect to the change in the volume. How do we evaluate the triple integral? If it's iterated here, um, and these can vary. This is just ideally where X is bounded by two numbers, lower and upper bounds. Uh, H or well, Y and Z are bounded below and above by functions, continuous, uh, that is. Uh, this could vary. Um, the goal typically is that you want the last integral, if any, to have lower and upper limits uh, being numbers uh, to give you the result uh, a number and not a function. Well, let's look at uh, some problems and let's see how they run. So just integrating directly, we integrate here. Um, if it's dx, dz, dy, then we integrate first with respect to x. You treat y and z as constants or coefficients, and then you move uh, along that chain. So here we have the integral from 0 to 3, the integral from 0 to 2. Integrate with respect to x, so we get 1 half x squared plus xy plus xz, where here the x is evaluated from 0 to 1. And then after that, we'll deal with the dz and the dy. So we have the integral from 0 to 3, the integral from 0 to 2. Evaluating the x at 1, this gives us 1 half plus y plus z. dz, dy. Now integrate with respect to z. So we have the integral from 0 to 3, 1 half z plus y z plus 1 half z squared. z is now evaluated from 0 to 2. Then out here, a dy. Let's get a little bit rowdy.
anyway. Um, R O W -A D Y. So we evaluate um, with respect to Z, so this becomes 1 half times a 2, so that gives us a 1 plus 2Z, or 2Y, that is, we're evaluating the Z. This is 2Y, then plus 1 half times 4, so that gives us a 2, and this is dy. So we clean that up. Integral from 0 to 3. 3 plus 2y. So this is dy. Integrate now with respect to, uh, to y. So this is 3y plus 2y squared divided by 2, which is just y squared. y is evaluated from 0 to 3. So here we have 3 times 3 is 9, plus 3 squared is 9. We get 18. Well, let's look here. First, we evaluate with respect to y. Well, there's no y there, so that's good for us. The integral from 1 to 4, we just rewrite that. The integral from one, 0 to 1, rewrite that. And this becomes 2z times e to the negative x squared, where times y, excuse me. Then the y is evaluated from 0 to x. dx dz. This is the integral from 1 to 4. The integral from 0 to 1. This becomes 2z. Here we evaluate the y at x. We just get x times e to the negative x squared. Evaluate the y at 0. It's just 0. So this is just now dx dz. So now we integrate with respect to to x, we have to use a u du substitution. So let u equal to that negative x squared, and du is negative 2x dx. So I have a 2x, so I don't have a negative, so I have 2x dx, so negative du would give us what we want, the x dx. So, so we have a negative integral from 1 to 4, the integral from 0 to 1, and this is the z is um, a coefficient. The 2x is represented, the 2x dx is represented by negative du. So we don't need that. Um, so we need the z, then the e to the u. And this is du, then over there, dz. So we integrate. And we do not hesitate. So the integral of e to the u du is just e to the u. So we have that z sitting there. This is e to the u. So go ahead and just plug in u negative x squared. The evaluation here is on the x, and the x has been evaluated from 0 to 1. And out here we have dz. So we evaluate uh, the x at 1, and then also uh, the difference here at 0. So minus the integral from 1 to 4. This is z times e to the negative 1 minus um, e to the 0. And this is dz. So in the front, we have 
this is negative times a 1, so this is 1. And then negative times this guy is minus 1 over e. They're constant, so we can put them in the front of the integral times the integral from 1 to 4 z dz. Now integrate with respect to z. And that's just 1 half z squared. So here we have 1 minus 1 over e. And then times 1 half z squared. z is evaluated from 1 to 4. So we get 16. Uh, 4 squared is 16 divided by 2 is 8. Then minus, evaluate the z at 1, we get 1 times a half, it's just 1 half. That gives us 16 minus 1, it's 15 over 2 times 1 minus 1 over 8. Okay, what about this? Um, and this is just straightforward uh, integration. Later on, we'll talk about how to set up a triple integral from scratch. So integrate with respect to z. Well, the good thing is there's no z there, so all this becomes is the two integrals. Uh, and here, 1 minus x times x times cosine y dy d, dx. Do you get that? Because there's no z there. So you just you, uh, you take the upper evaluation and you plug it in into the integrand because this downstairs for the lower integrand is zero. So you can just write this. This is a shortcut. Zero for the integral from zero to power over two. And this is just one minus x times x or x minus um, x squared. Cosine y dy dx. Now integrate with respect to y. Integrate the cosine, which gets sine. So here, this is the integral from 0 to 4. This is x minus x squared. We'll deal with that last. This is times sine y, where sine is evaluated from 0 to power over 2. And then out here, we have dx. You evaluate sine at power over 2, we get 1, then minus sine is 0, 0. So all we have is just the integral from 0 to 4 of x minus x squared dx. Now integrate that. That gives us 1 half x squared minus 1 third x to the third. Evaluate it from 0 to 4. So this gives us 1 half times 4 squared minus 1 third times 4 to the third. So we get here uh, 16 divided by 2 is 8 minus this 64 over 3. So we get 24 minus 64 is negative 40 all over 3. Okay. Let's keep moving. Here they want you to set up a triple integral. No need to, to integrate. There's some problems later on that we have set it up and also integrate. So the, this is a solid in the first octant. First octant has a meaning. That means that x, y, and z are all positive. Here, x positive, y positive, and z positive. So you're in that, you're in the quadrant, the first quadrant, but everything above it. So it's, it's the octant. So you got you got eight uh, subsectors, and so we know that we have the lower bounds, um, zeros. Now, so z, so here we want to calculate this this solid. We have three terms, uh, one for z, 0 less than or equal to z, less than or equal to 5 minus x minus y. Now, what about the, the, the so-called bounds for, for x and y? Here's how you do it. To, to get the next order in the 
echelon as you go from Z then to Y and then um, uh, to X. We use a process that you used in partial fractions where to solve for something else you say let uh, this term here equal zero to solve for the other variable. So, um, so reducing the space from the third space to the second space you can do that by letting Z equal to zero just to look at what happens in the xy plane. So let z equal to 0, and that implies that 0 is equal to 5 minus x minus y. Now to get the y by itself, this implies that y is equal to 5 minus x. So the lower bound for y is 0, y, 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 y. Sorry, why? And the upper bound for y is 5 minus x. Now, if you guessed it, the upper bound for x would be 5. Now, based on this, let y equal to 0. That implies that you have 5 is equal to. 0 is equal to 5 minus x, that is x is equal to 5. That becomes your upper bound, so 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5. Here the, the limits of integration determine the triple integral. So to set this up, we have the integral from 0 to 5, the integral from 0 to 5 minus x, then the integral from 0 to 5 minus x minus y. Now, the bounds here rep uh, work with or represent uh, the, the boundaries for z, so this is dz. And the next one, 0 to 5 minus x, is the containment for y, so this is dy. Then the numbers from 0 to 5 represent the uh, extremes for x, so this is dx. And that's all you need. So here that I want you to solve is set it up. And to solve that is no problem. But we just do what we're told. Okay. Same thing for this one. Just set it up. But we have upper and lower bounds uh, for z as given. Now, what about y? Let z equal to 0. And that implies that if z is 0, here is equal to 6 minus x squared minus y squared. Get the y squared on the other side. It's equal to 6 minus x squared. So that implies that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6 minus x squared. Here you have your lower bounds for y. And your upper bound. Now, working in this fashion, do you see that the bounds for x would be plus or minus 6? Now, when you see that, you don't have to show the work because it's obvious. So here, let let y equal to zero. I'm looking at this one. So this implies that zero is equal to six minus x squared. Add x squared to both sides. So that is x squared is equal to six. This implies that x is equal to plus or minus um, the square root of 6. And that's correct. So, so upper and lower bounds for x is plus or minus the square root of 6. I think if I said 6 before, then uh, I, that was not correct. So, so here we have negative 6 less than or equal to x less than or equal to negative square root of 6. Ah! Okay. So
So if that be the case, we get the triple integral. So the integral lower bound is negative square root of 6, upper bound is the square root of 6. Here then this is the integral. The lower bound for y is negative square root of 6 minus x squared. Upper bound for y is the square root of 6 minus x squared. Then times the integral, the lower bound for z was 0 and the upper bound for z was just directly this term right here. I don't know why I want to think um, about the uh, segment of a, a sphere. Uh, this is just 6 minus x squared minus y squared. We get those radicals with um, with y and with x. So your solid is defined by that and here this is dz dy dx. Use the triple integral to find the volume of the solid shown here in this region. Well, let's see if we can find this region. Z goes from 0 to x. Y goes from this parabola, this parabola to 0, right? And then x, here's the x-axis. Excuse me, this is x that's bounded from, this is the x-axis. Oh, they, they turned it around. Huh? Yeah. They didn't use the right-handed rule. So here, um, x is bounded below by 0 and above by the parabola. I knew something was funny because I had a, a y here, and this was 4 minus y squared. So uh, a quantity cannot be contained by itself, uh, not in that fashion. And then y is bounded below by, well, this is bounded below by negative 2 and bounded uh, above by positive 2. negative 2. Why did I write 0? So this represents the, the solid. So we compute the volume. So we have the integral from negative 2 to 2, then the integral from 0 to 4 minus y squared, then the integral from 0 to x. So 0, 0 to x is the bound containment for z, so this is dz. Then the next one from 0 to 4 minus y squared is the containment for x, so this is dx. And then lastly, dy. Now they want us to integrate that, so we integrate with respect to z. This becomes z evaluated at x, so this is just the double integral, and then of the integrand x dx dy. So now we integrate with respect to x. We get 1 half x squared. That's evaluated from 0 to 4 minus y squared dy. 
So this is 1 half times the integral from negative 2 to 2 of 4 minus y squared to be squared. You evaluate at 0, you just get a 0 dy. We simplify this. This is 1 half times the integral from negative 2 to 2. We fold that out. So we get 16 minus 8y squared plus y to the fourth. So we get now one half, and we integrate, we get 16y minus 8 thirds y to the third plus y to the fifth over 5. And here we evaluate it from negative 2 to 2. Let's run that. Uh, one half through there. It doesn't matter, but you can. So this gives us 8y minus 4 over 3 times y to the third plus 1 to the fifth over 10. Now we do the evaluation from negative 2 to 2. So we get 16 minus 4 thirds times 8, 32 over 3, plus 32, 2 to the fifth, divided by 10. Now it's minus 8 times negative 2, gives us positive 16. It's minus this minus, it becomes positive, but then we evaluate the y at negative 2, so that becomes the negative of 4 times 8, so we get. 32 over 3. We get the same forms because the, all these terms are odd. Right? And so um, this is minus that minus there from the odd term. We get a positive again. So plus 32 over 10. So we get 32 minus 64 over 3 plus 64 over 10. And that'll give you 256 over 15. That's the volume. A couple more problems here. Again, let's set the uh, the triple integral up and then compute the volume. So first, octant. So we know that that x has to be positive y positive. Likewise, z positive. So we have the bounds then. Uh, z goes from 0 to 4 minus x squared. y goes from 0 to 4 minus x squared. Now, for x, its lower bound is going to be. 0, but the upper bound is going to be 2, right? So if you let y equal to 0, we get x to be plus or minus 2. We stop there at 0 because we're in the first octet. But the same thing if you let z equal 0, you still get uh, x to be plus or minus 2. That is, you're going to go from 0 to positive 2. Right? Okay, so I think we got it. The volume is the integral from 0 to 2. I want the last integral to have numbers for the lower and upper limits. It doesn't matter about the, the two inner integrals. So this is dz, dy, 
dx. The neat thing is that, you know, we're integrating here just a function of one, if you will. The, each integrand represents a dimension, so we, uh, with, with the function here is one, then we're talking about the length times the width times the height, so it gives us the volume. So do you see that this is the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 minus x squared times 4 minus x squared, or just 4 minus x squared to be squared dx. Once you do the this integral and this integral, this is what you end up with. So you, we simplify that. This is the integral from 0 to 2. This is 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth dx. So here we get 16x minus 8 thirds x cubed plus x to the fifth over 5. It's the evaluation from 0 to 2. This, <laughs> this problem is the same problem um, uh, prior. Um, there is no difference. You evaluate at 2, you get 32 minus 8 times 2 to the third, that's 64 over 3, plus 2 to the third here is 32 over 5, and that gives you 256 over 15. And just let me verify that on my calculator. Yeah. That's it. One more. I'm going to set this triple integral up to find the volume. Z is bounded. Uh, with 2 minus y and 4 minus y squared, which is above, which is on the bottom. We don't know. We have to graph that out. x is bounded below by 0, above by 3. So we can go ahead and get that. y is bounded uh, below, but uh, what about above? That's it's not given, so we have to do some, some graphing and some computing to see. Now, if you set the two functions for z equal, we can find the, the containment for... Uh, for z, uh, or for y, excuse me. Uh, z, is, z is contained. We don't know which is above or below. We have to graph. So setting these two equal, that would help us to solve for uh, y. So this is 2 minus y is equal to 4 minus y squared. Well, this implies that, let's see, let's get the y squared on the other side. So we have y squared minus y minus 2 equal to 0. And you factor get y minus 2 times y plus 1 equal to 0. So this implies that y is equal to 2 and then y is equal to negative 1. You don't need the negative 1 because here y is going to be bounded below by that uh, 0 there, right? So we have the containment for x, so y is contained below by 0, above by the 2. 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 2. Now for the z, let's determine which is above and which is below. Let's do a quick, easy sketch of the graph. Uh, 4 minus y squared does this. And then 2 minus y would do something like that. And so we're talking um, y goes from, from the 0 to 2. Oh, that is crazy.
y goes from 0 to 2, so y doesn't go up to 4, right? And so it wouldn't pick up the rest of that part outside of that uh, parabola up there. x goes from 0 to 3. So it's interesting. It's not bad. Um, so this is not x and y, excuse me. This becomes y and z. <laughs> That's better. Okay, so I think the neat thing here is that I just want you to see that the parabola is the upside down parabola is the one that's above and this line is the one that's going to be um, below and that's the key sometimes the graph is not drawn uh, correctly uh, to a T but I think you get the idea so all I want to know is this this is 2 minus Y is less than Z is less than or equal to 4 minus Y squared And so we're looking for the volume. So we have the integral, three integrals, right? And if we use dz first, doesn't matter about uh, x or y, which comes after that. They're numbers. So x is bounded below and above from 0 to 3. Y is, about, y is bounded below by 0, above by 2. The Z is bounded below by 2 minus Y and above by the 4 minus Y squared. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. We compute this. The integral from 0 to 3, the integral from 0 to 2. We evaluate uh, at z, this becomes z evaluated from 2 minus y to 4 minus y squared. So this is 4 minus y squared minus uh, the expression 2 minus y. So this is minus parentheses 2 minus y dy dx. So this is the integral from 0 to 3 integral from 0 to 2. 4 minus 4 minus 2 is 2 minus y squared and this is plus y. This is dy dx. So we integrate kind of slow. Bound it below by the line and then everything above that, everything below the curve. I knew something was well not was not right when I did that shading in. It's it's not falling below the the, the um that y axis there. But. That's better. <laughs> so let's go back here. So we integrate with respect to y, so this becomes 2y minus 1 third y to the third plus 1 half y squared. And the y is evaluated from 0 to 2. Then out here we have dx. And the neat thing about it, uh, the, the integral uh, from 0 to 3 of dx, since there's no x there, it's just multiplied by 3, whatever we get. So we have the integral from 0 to 3. Evaluate the y at 2, so it gives us a 4 minus, uh, this is 8 thirds, 
then this is plus 4 divided by 2 is 2 dx. So this is just a 3 times what we have here. This is 6 minus 8 over 3. So we get 3 times 6 is 18. And then 3 times negative 1 over 8 is 8. And all we end up with is just 10. And so that's the area. Thank you. 40 minutes.